is still running that command prompt. All right. <clears throat> it's been a while since we did a stream working on game stuff. The first thing I want to do, since I've been in the spirit of clearing away uh, things that have been on my list forever, there's a hacky thing in the game right now, which I'm sure annoys everybody. So when I start it up, it loads a particular level. Right now, it's this level. But that changes based on what I'm working on, because, um, oh, that would be a good stream. Because, uh, you know, I would like to make things fast for me, but now there's more people working on the game than ever, and it's probably disorienting for them to start on different levels all the time. The way that I do it right now is uh, at the top of main, there's just this thing that says what campaign to load. Okay, and that's stupid. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say it's always overworld. Uh, and I'm going to say use local.variables to start on a different campaign as follows. And then we'll fill this in with a paste of whatever we do. We'll get rid of these lines. Local.variables, okay, let's, let's go to our data folder. So we have this variables file format that some of you may have seen where this binds it to a particular data structure somewhere. And then we have all these variables and these get hot loaded uh, you know, while you're running the game and they take effect immediately and all that, right? So we have all this stuff. So I'm going to make a new one called uh, startup. And I'm going to say, um, starting level, I don't know, level, just call it level. And uh, um, uh, oh, this is a campaign. Hmm. So here's the thing. Maybe I don't. Let's not do it by campaign. Let's do it by level. To start on a different level as follows. Um. Let's just do that. Uh, the system will find the level, the campaign containing this level if it exists. Um, if not, it'll if the campaign exists, you'll be able to move back and forth. Incomplete test a level that doesn't exist. You'll be able to move back and forth using the bracket keys. If it doesn't exist, it'll be loaded as a temporary, the, that level. Draft campaign. Okay. Great. That is our mission statement for what we are doing. Why not have a startup config file that is not version controlled? Because that is the whole point of local.variables. So this thing, this thing here is all dot variables, right? There's one called local.variables, which I don't have one of right now, but if you make this file. It's an extension of all dot variables, but it's not version controlled. So for any of these, you can put your version of any of these over here, and it doesn't screw with anybody else's settings. That's the whole point. Which one did I say? Um, 
Yeah. That's a system we did on the witness, and it worked really well for us, so we're doing it again on this game. Casey did what? What did Casey do? Is colon colon const version of colon equals? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, oh, we didn't recompile. So notice now it's loading local dot variables. It's saying, hey, folder startup is not defined by the game code and trying to set the value of level. It's weird that we don't specify which variables file. I'll, I don't want to derail, but uh, variables file errors name the file. Because when we're shipping the game, we might have multiple. OK, so. I'm starting in this, which is a crappy level that doesn't mean anything. What a crappy level. But that's where we're going to start up. It's going to be everybody's motivation to make the game look better. OK. Do I know if Stephen Lavelle is working on his next project? I don't know. Probably, maybe. He does a lot of small games. OK. So let's put this OK, so I guess we'll put it here. Startup variables. There's a struct of startup variables. I guess I could just straight up, hmm, I could do the Ignacio thing. But we don't have a good way to do that right now. It's worth thinking about. OK, so well, what are we trying to do? We're trying to have a thing called level, which is a string. That's all. That's all we're trying to do. So now Folder startup is not defined by the game code. Oh, because I called it startup variables. When I add value folder, is that an override? I think it's an override. base folder. I might want to give an override. Okay, so now we're just saying startup. 
I want to bind my F7 key to run the X64 build. Attempt to index a nil value. Add value folder. What? Oh, that attempt to index a nil value is not. Add value folder. We're crashing an add value folder. That's weird. Name equals folder. If override name. That's weird. What am I possibly doing? That's crashing in this routine. I didn't do anything. Folder struct info name this should return let's do this oh wait I, I swapped the order of these right ah what I get for not looking at the code. Um, I kind of want some Perl style thing to, to do this. Maybe long term. All right. Mismatching levels of indirection. Folder dot struct info equals tis Wait, we know it's a type info. We don't need we don't even need that cast. That's old. We could just do this, right? Should be able to. Except eh, yeah, okay. There's there's mild reasons to do this. We do this so that we don't get cryptic errors if someone calls this routine with a non struct type for T. Okay. I'm going to edit my F7 to build the X64 version because it's faster. Settings. Keys and macro. F7. Dash dash X64. Save. F7. It's a little faster. Okay. So now we should be able to not barf on startup. That's great. OK. Next. Campaign. OK. If startup variables dot, what was it called? Wait, I put it at the top. Startup variables dot level. So we're going to lie at first. And just to have a little bit of success, we're going to use this as a campaign name. Right. Uh, so. We're going to say level uh, drafts me. That's a campaign, not a level, but I should be able to start there. Hey, uh, how about Heroes 1? Is that a campaign? 
Yep. Great. So that works. Now, instead of calling switch to campaign, uh, look through every um, look through every dot level set and and what and what and uh, find this level the first dot level set containing this level is the campaign that we should launch bro okay so now we've got this thing called the level set catalog and uh, It should, I believe it should already on initialization time have all the files that we want. So can we iterate over a catalog? No. Um, I'm not gonna make an iterator right now because current iterators are too C++ -y. I'm gonna wait for the new thing. But uh, so for now, I'm just going to cat equals level set catalog for cat dot um, really, where is it living? Oh, the table. Is that where this is? Yeah, it's this way. Do we have an iterator for this? Nope. It's fine. The C++ style iterators, even though ours are shorter than theirs and more convenient, it's still too much code. It's bad. So we're, we're going um, to have improved iterators someday in the future. So uh, for cat.hashes, if not it continue, um, Level set catalog is uh, right. It's it's got a level set. So uh, set equals cat dot values of it index, uh, and I'm just going to print the name for now. So in theory, that should iterate over that. It's not, it's not there. Hashes, oh, dot table. We don't, yeah. Table dot, okay. Oh, we never start a campaign. <laughs> Let's do this for a second so that we don't assert. Uh, but you can see we have all these level sets. That's great. Because these catalogs on startup, we scan the file tree, we see what extensions of file we have, and we pre-seed all these catalogs. Um, so, uh, I don't know if they're loaded. Uh, 
Loaded true. Okay. So then, um, well, a level set has an array of level names. If, so we're going to have a handled. So if we find it, if something handle equals true, right, and then if not handled uh, log print uh, startup error can't find level in any of the level sets. We are trying to load it because uh, dot variables file is telling us to right always explain what's going on this isn't code smell like people were saying referring to this is the job of your program is to do this kind of stuff um, and the name we are looking for is level okay so if it dot name is equal to level, uh, then what? Uh, well, we try to load it. So now, where is do switch to campaign lev? It's in this very file. We load this, oh, we have an overload already. So do switch to campaign. And then um, we also want to set the index, right? So index is minus one. And uh, advanced level so if level or if index not equal to minus one cs dot uh, what was it called? Current level index equals index. All right. So that gives us the power to start on a particular level. Name is not a member of string. Oh, because it's level names. Duh. If it is equal to level. There we go. Um, all right. I'm going to assume that doesn't fail because whatever. Actually, is there? Yeah, we don't. We just assume it succeeds. It's fine. Can't find level heroes one. That's because it's a campaign name. So that's good. Why do I keep putting brackets here? Um, if it's a campaign name, Let's get this working and check it in, and then we'll optionally consider loading a campaign name. Um, I don't know. So actually, let's do this. Let's do this. Actually, also break break a uh, hash, right? We want to break out of the outer loop here because we're done. We're going to say if it is equal to set dot name, then we'll do that. So we do either 
set name or level name. Undeclared identifier it. Uh, if level is equal to set dot name, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, there we go. Our level was called Heroes One. Right? I can call it Heroes Three and restart and we start up. I can call it uh, a particular level, uh, death from above, and we can start it. And now we're in a particular level. So, is that really what that level is? Wait, hold on. Really? Is that what this is? Yep, okay. I was thinking of a different level, but that's what that one was. So great, that is our new feature. Um, I will email people about this later. Uh, actually, I'll email people about it now, because why not? Oh, test a level that doesn't exist. Okay, so we load overworlds. Can't find level in any of the level sets. Great. That is great. Great. Sokoban, commit, better control over which level you start on via local.variables. Did I leave my old? Yeah, let's close that. Okay, team email. I've just added, okay, uh, I've been thinking for a while that it's pretty annoying whenever I change the game to start on whichever level I am working on for my own convenience and everyone else gets surprised and has to change their muscle memory of what's going on, etc. So I just added a more uh, formal way of uh, controlling which level we start on so that anyone can do it. Uh, we do this via local.variables as follows. or whatever. Level you want. Uh, you can use either a level name um, as shown above or a campaign name if you have your own campaign example. In which case, it will start you on the first level of that campaign. Hopefully, this works great for everyone. Let me know. Now we always start on the very, very ugly overworld. Okay. Now I will log into Gmail where y'all can't see. Are there any questions about what I just did there? On topic questions. Oh, 
Tim needs to get that as well. All right, that's a feature. Will the release include this game engine? Yes, it will. Is that SVN public? No, it is not. Why not name the variable campaign to be clear? Because it's not a campaign necessarily. Putting a campaign there is the exception. Usually it's a level name probably. Because what will happen is the artist will be working on a specific level for a while, for like five or six days maybe. So they don't want to start at the beginning of the campaign. They want to start on that specific level. You had a for loop where you did not break after match. I don't know. Where? I break here. I break here. Those are the only two matches. Am I missing something? Have I heard of or looked at plastic SCM? No. Does SVN handle large binary assets well? Yes, it does. Uh, the witness repository is like a hundred gigabytes and we had a build server automatically light mapping tons of binaries every single day and automatically checking them in and it worked great. Does this feature extend to all variables or only the level? Uh, it's only specific variables. So if I go to all that variables, then you know, I pick what to expose in here by putting in certain data structures. You don't really want all variables in your program to be changeable by this. I mean, I suppose you could do that, but yuck. Yuck. And then like you have namespacing problem. It's just better. 100 gigs isn't that big for a modern game. 100 gigs is not that big. Okay, startup level crossed off the list. Any more on topic questions about that or do we go on? You didn't catch what the point of effects or startup is for. Those are just the structure, right? So I made this structure. Um, here's what I did. When, so, these are all in separate data structures. So I made a structure with an instance called startup variables, right? Which is this, right? Is one of these. It's only got one variable right now, but it might have more later. And then I said, well, it's going to be bound into this namespace just as startup, right? So when you say colon slash startup, Here, it just means any variables you see now are going to be in this struct, right? So when you go to this one, this is that over and over for different structs. So there's one struct with gameplay stuff. There's one with effects and so forth. This kind of file format is so much better than some crap like XML. It's astonishing. Astonishing. Where are the local variables? They're just in... Um, they're just in those instances of the structs that I just showed. What is the next to be developed feature? You'll see in a second. Uh, let me get some more tea. I'll be back.
let's see. Where is the file containing the local variables stored? It's just in the data folder. Uh, no, 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 no. Someone's saying size of repository is a meaningless figure. No, when I say it's 100 gigabytes, that is the size of one image, right? You're saying the witness is 5 gigabytes, but that's the crunched version that ships to people, right? The files that are in people's folder when they are working on that is 100 gigabytes, right? The total history of the entire repository is probably terabytes. I don't even know how big it is. Because artists check in their source, like Photoshop files and all that stuff. We just throw tons of binary data at it. Will all those gameplay defines be in, in engine UI? Not these ones. No, it, it's not worth making UI for everything. It's a waste of time. <laughs> do I know of any way to do a system like that in C++? Yeah, but it's annoying. Are those alarms going off in your background? Yeah, it's like trucks backing up or something and everybody thinks they don't want to get sued. So let's make our truck backup noise as piercing as possible so that we annoy everybody for three blocks. Okay. Well, let's start doing the next thing. Let's start doing the next thing. So, uh, in this game, let's pick a, let's use this startup. Um, this is my drafts thing. Let's use, I don't know. What is test blocks? Let's see what that is. Oh God, not that one. That's not a good test. Um, clone test. Like, I don't know if I have a good, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Um, Okay, so we're just going to use this as our junk level and do stuff on it. So, uh, one thing that we have in this game is lots of static uh, meshes, as you see here, you know, this kind of a thing. Um, we don't have, we have animating characters. We don't have like any animating background meshes, right? So like you'd like to be able to have like a banner waving in the wind somewhere or something, right? So I want to add the capability to do this. And so uh, Eric, oh, I forgot to send that previous email. Oh no, I didn't, I didn't forget. Um, Eric sent me a, oh, that's another thing to do on stream. We've got so many engine features to implement on stream. 
going to be great. It's going to be great. Applying to a text. Casey's new game is not in this language, no. Has the friends and family release gone as smoothly as you planned? It has not happened yet. It has not happened yet. And there is no plan for how smoothly or not smoothly it'll go. We just have to see. Okay, uh, so I'm looking for Eric's email. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to take an inanimate. I'm going to instantiate it. I'm going to set the mesh to game from fire A. Okay, so why it's only highlighting part of it, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to just delete a bunch of these other things from this level. And our goal today. Uh, we'll do that. Our goal today is uh, to make this animate, although maybe not. I might I might cut the stream short and run somewhere and do something and come back later. We'll see. Um, so, you know, right now, whoa. So right now it's got an animated mesh, but it's kind of inheriting someone else's bone data. So that's a giant mess. Um, we could fix that bug, but that's a separate, that's a separate bug. Let's not do that. Basically, see how it moves whenever my character moves? It's because like that data stays in the shader because we're not overriding it because we don't know that this has an animation. It's goofy. It's goofy. So I think the best way to do this, you know, right now I made this as an inanimate, but I think I want to make a new entity type for like looping animation entity. And the first step would just be to make that new type of thing and uh, like looping animated or just animated. We'll call it animated. Animated, no, because other things are animated. We'll call it I don't know. You know, naming things is hard. We all know this. Naming things is hard. Name it Bob. No, Bob would not be a good name for this. Uh, anyway, let's go to entities. So we have inanimate. Let's make a new one called animating. It's just animating. So we have an entity and that's just it. We're going to look up the animation. Maybe later we have to add a way to do it. Um, but for now, the animation is going to just be the same as the mesh for this. So first let's just, uh, well, 
I don't even remember how much I have to do to put this in there. So let's just compile. Let's see if we can even see this. I think we can. We might have to put it in some lists of who's visible when. A, animating, instantiate. It's visible. So I could copy the mesh. Boom. All right, we'll delete our inanimate. We could have actually changed the type of that. We have a way to do it. Whoops. We have a way to do it, but uh, there we go. Okay. So we have an animating. It has appeared in the world. So now the question is, how do we play the animation? Well, right now we kind of have a hard-coded. Oh, do we need? OK, we can actually add an animation player onto any entity. That is good to know. Update animation. We're just going to add a loop here. We'll clean this up at some point later. We update the animation. OK. Uh, well, where do we add animation player for these other things? We will do that here. If it's a switch or a gate, there we go. Um, case uh, animating. Add an animation player and play an animation that is looping and not frozen. And that animation should be the same as mesh.name. Unable to play animation game prom fire a game prom fire a. Oh God, what? Why is the mesh's name twice? Okay, let's let's do a super hack. Mesh. Name fix, super hack. Okay, well, that didn't work. I don't know why, but 4, 10, 16 equals 16. This is how we work with our bugs. Wait, it's just not... Unable to find asset. What? People, what is going on? Name is Kawabunga. Oh, did I? Maybe I didn't recompile correctly. I don't know. Game prompt fire. Oh, we're concatenating them already. Already, okay. Here we go. We don't need the super hack. This is fine. Play animation. So if name 
anim name is this, else anim name is e dot mash dot name. Looping animating entities use this. Well, we'll just do this. And date it just so I know someday if it seems like it might be out of date. Undeclared identifier name. Oh, yeah. Why didn't that? Why aren't my undeclared identifiers telling me the frickin' they're not highlighting anymore? Bruh, did I break that with my indentation thing? We're gonna have to fix that later. Undeclared ident fix. We had that working so nicely and then I broke it. Undeclared identifier anim name, uh, anim name. If name, bam. All right. Well, now it's flying around the screen. If we want to make sure this works with known animations, okay, wait. It shouldn't always be false. It should say looping. Um, let me just soak on data art. Um, what was it called? Let's look at this. That is hella root motion. Okay. I don't even know. I'm not going to trust this, that this is wrong. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to let animated Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say animation name is a string. That's version two. because we already saved one of these. Uh, so we have to be able to load version one. And this just lets us over, I should have put that in there, you know, cause duh, obviously we're gonna want that. Yeah, so we get an animation name So if uh, prepend mesh name equals false, uh, if e dot animation name mesh dot name there. Okay, we're going to do this differently. So here. Uh, 
if prepend enum name is a string, if prepend mesh name, this else Okay, like that. Uh, true, true by default, or we break everything. Animation name is not a member of entity. Uh, yeah. I've got to get this specific type. Okay. Okay, so that guy's still flying around. The reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to make this because we know this guy's animations are good. Coerce animating. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and then animation name. Let's see, what animations does this guy play? Thief, active walk forward 01. Okay, I hope that's right. There we go. So it works, right? That's our animated. The frickin' flame doesn't work, but the feature works. So we are ready to ship that feature. Anyway, any questions about uh, what happened? Because I'm about to send an email saying, hey, this feature is in, but, but in fact, I'll put one of these on the frickin' pallet level. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, boom, we're putting this so every time you start up the pallet level, you will see, oh wait, people, it won't animate on the pallet level, will it? No. Um, all right, let's delete that. How about How about here?
Where is this? It's way the hell over there. So any questions about what's going on? When the hero is moving, it looked like the animation is running faster. Yeah, um, we have in the uh, in the animation file that drives the characters, there is speed control and all that stuff that does not exist uh, in in this, right? So yeah, okay. I'm going to check this in. No, not that. This. Check in animating test. And I will send another team email. OK, I have checked in a test for this. However, the animation for the flames seems crazy, e.g root motion is all over the place. So uh, to have a known good animation, I made a, a version of the thief that is actually a non-player object that is playing a known good running animation. Uh, if you play Heroes 1-1, one, one, it's right there by the exit. The entity type is animating. Very simple for now. All right. People will be happy that they have that feature. I'm getting hungry. I just ate a salad like an hour ago. That's what happens when you eat salads. Seriously, any on topic questions here? That's not on top. Dependency package system is not on topic. Is that statue weeping? Uh, maybe. How many artists on Sokoban? I don't know. There's always too many artists. What is the point of the version in the animating inanimate structs? The point is that when I add fields to those entities, we can still old, we can still load older versions without worrying about what's going on. Do we have algebraic data types and pattern matching? No. Any plans to support it? No. How do you detect entities with the metaprogramming? We look for structs. So all the entities, and you know, this is just our own application specific hack, but 
Anybody who's sort of subclassed off of entity uses this as the first line. So we just look for people who do that. Can you put zoom stretch information in animation data? Yes. Do I have some kind of fact on the website to the language? No, but uh, eventually we're going to make one pretty soon here because people would like one. People would like one. Too much texting during stream. Are there any restrictions on what can and can't be animated within the game? Not really. Uh, what do we provide for error handling, e.g. exception? Nothing. We provide a function called panic. I have a whole rant on YouTube about it, how exceptions C++ style are dumb. In fact, I've got like three rants about that. How does one export the animation data from, say, Maya to your format? There's just an exporter that we have that Ignacio wrote, I think, that... Uh, we wrote for the witness and we've modified it slightly lately, but it's still the same thing. Panic is a hard exit. Yes. Panic is a hard exit. I'm going to cross this off. Mesh name fix, okay, I don't need to do that because that was things behaving as expected. Um, animation bug, I think that was when I thought the fire flickering around was a bug and it's not, so that's fine. Variables file errors, character rendering, any of this stuff. Let's uh, really fast, since this came up, um, when we log print, we have an error routine in file handler. We should use that. Right. And it, it puts the agent string and all that stuff. Um, don't we? Don't we? No, I guess not. Um, I want to say, wait. I swear we did this at some point. Okay, I'm gonna make a local routine. How many log prints do we have? Enough, enough. Okay, error, colon, um, handler, file handler. Um, Format uh, string args dot dot any, right? We'll say 
new format is tprint error at line whatever of whatever. Right, and then um, handler dot line number handler dot file name. What's it called? Is it full name? Full path. We'll put full path for now. And. Um, And then the format, right? So that's still going to have percents in it from whatever other people passed. And then we'll say uh, log print handler dot agent. What's it called? Log agent. Um, comma. Uh, new format. Comma. Uh, dot dot args, right? Right, and then we go error handler. Actually, let's not even make it a pointer, let's just do that. Handler boom. Error handler. Boom. Does that compile? Nope. Undeclared identifier file handler because it's called text file handler, bro. Text. Okay. Let's make sure that works. So we're going to go to uh, local left variables and we're going to say that. Run. There we go. Error at line one of data local dot variables expected a slash. Okay, that is more informative. That is more informative. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Error handler. Quote. And it's not so redundant. And now if we add more errors, it'll be easier. Error handler. Quote. By the way, one thing that I've been lazy about is uh, error routine in animation graph. So we have tons of these in the animation file loader, and I think I was just too lazy. In fact, yeah. In fact, I should tag this print like so I get checking on it, right? Like that means that we check the arguments to make sure there's the right number of format strings and all that. Because I could easily make a dumb mistake here. Okay, does that compile? Aha! Good thing we tagged it as print like. Line 157. Expected a value, but there was none. We don't have to say what line because our new error routine says that. Ta da! Okay, let's fix local.variables and test it again. Great. Awesome. Overhauled text uh, file handler error routine local to vars for now. Are there any questions about what happened there? We've been getting some stuff done. It's only been an hour 20.
check my texts. How does the handler know what the calling line number was? Well, that text file handler, you know, we're using that to advance the lines in the text file. So it actually uh, stores, it actually stores its own like line number and just things, you know, it stores things. Are all functions of files always in scope or are there visibility modifiers? Um, you can make things be file scope right now, like in C. Uh, there will be more scope operations later, but that's the basic one that we use. What do you do when you get stuck on a problem to the point of going around in circles? I don't usually get that stuck, honestly. Most, once you have a lot of experience, most programming problems are not very hard. And the ones that are hard, you tend to need to solve them. <laughs> Can you have a print format where the arguments are printed in another order than the order they are passed to the procedure? Yes, we have demoed that many times. Yes, you can do that. Okay, well, you know what? I am going to put this error into text file handler because why wouldn't we do that? And then we'll call it from animation graph. Well, do we still, yep. I am hungry. I might have to stop the stream just to eat. I'm hungry. I want a big hamburger. Um, okay, log print. So I'm going to just replace this string on moss 
with error is handler. Sometimes handler is probably going to be a pointer, and I'll just dereference it in those cases. Um, comma, quote. Right. Wait, why didn't that? I thought those were the same. Error inline. Uh, error handler, comma, quote. All right. And then replace comma handler dot line number with comma. Whoops. Line number nothing. Okay. So some of these are going to barf because of using a pointer and whatever. I want to fix that identifier problem, but this is a game engine feature stream, so I will not allow. My, I want to see my nice red identifiers. Wanted text file handler given pointer text file handler 6999. I should, I'm thinking of making that an implicit cast, by the way, because why not? 610. 699. Unable to parse. Yeah, we don't need graph.name. Seven oh four. Six ten. I just edited that one. Type mismatch. Whoops. Wait, what? Let's get this. Uh, oh, God. We'll leave that for a bit because that's a warning, not an error. Graph, node, destination name, line number, I accidentally deleted that, same thing, line 217, the mistake of wantonly searching and replacing. Keep doing it. Whoops. Look at all these. Wait, we don't have a handler there. Whatever, I might have screwed some more things up. How many line numbers did I delete that I shouldn't have deleted?
Finally, finally, finally. Oh, the uh, the fact that he walks faster also sometimes is just um, time actually goes faster when you make your character run. It's this little bit Benny Hill like thing right now. Remove all those extra verbose log prints. Not all of them. Most of those. I've been wanting to do that for a while. That's not really a feature so much as, you know, doing a thing that's good to do. Yeah, I didn't learn binary floating point numbers in high school. That's pretty advanced for high school. Do I think there's a value in following a policy of never using pointers as owners and instead copying small structs to change ownerships? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I definitely pass small structs around sometimes, but it's not because I'm that worried about ownership. It's just because it's easy. I think people freak out about ownership in a way that is unwarranted. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It is not that big of a deal. Okay. Um, well, look at all the things that are crossed off. I think it is now time to start another big feature and this one's going to be uh, tedious and so forth <laughs> so i'm going to warm up a hot tea this time while we get ready it's maybe not going to be that tedious it's basically there's a feature we have in the witness engine and i want to put it in the sokoban engine so let me get some hot tea and then we'll at least get started on that i don't know if we'll finish it this stream not a cupcake yet. No, we've already had a cupcake this morning. Maybe later. We'll see. Back in a second.
Okay. I'm going to have some of my seed and nut snacks. In retrospect, the high school education you had was very designed by committee. You barely understood floating point at the time, but you had no idea the average program in UNES. Yeah, well, I don't know then. If you didn't really understand it that well, maybe it wasn't so good. Hard to say. Okay, so the functionality from the witness that is being requested by the art team now is to be able to save out as a .obj or really any file, but we already have a .obj thing. Um, that would um, You know, so they can load geometry from the game in the editor. And why would you do that, you ask? Well, sometimes you might mock up a level by putting like gray boxes in certain places in the editor where it's easy to do that. And then you select all of that and export it as one mesh back out uh, so that you can load it in Maya or 3D Studio Max and like build an actual mesh out of it and push it back over, right? It's just useful to be able to have those reference points. People really want that. So we're going to make that work. And the old code is in C++, so we're going to move the code over at the same time. I am going to grab some more snacks. They're all wrapped in plastic like they're in Twin Peaks or something. Come on, man. Come on, man. I listen to music. No, when I program, no.
why do I use almost exclusively C, I, O, and strings in that code? Because the C++ versions of all that stuff are way more terrible. So why wouldn't I use C, I, O, and strings? They're better. How do I handle jumping back and forth constantly between the new language and C, C++? Do you find it difficult at all? Um, once in a while, I pick up brain habits from one language in the other. Like, often when I'm typing in C++, I don't put the parentheses around the if condition. I have to go back and do that. But it's not that hard. Were Commonwealth countries had the most sales in the witness? I don't know what that means. You love the formatting more for C's, I.O., and strings compared to C++? Yeah, that is true. There are many, many benefits to the C way of doing it. Okay, let's, uh, let's do some things. So this, what I was looking for before uh, was the actual code that this calls, but I'm not sure. Oh, we just write the frickin' file out. We didn't abstract this at all. I am fine with that. So I'm just gonna frickin' paste this and I'll translate it I'll translate it on demand. It's going to end up being a little bit different because we're not going to fprintf. We're going to like probably build it in memory and so forth. Uh, okay. So we're going to go Sokoban source editor uh, obj file, right? We're going to paste that. We're going to go to editor. We're going to load obj file we are going to add it to source control before we forget and that's all we have to do we don't have to add it to a project or anything because this language isn't terrible like c++ all right so now I don't remember what these mean, but whoops. Whoops. Directory exports. Do I have that in file utilities? Make dir make full. Okay, well, um, we're just going to call that. I'm going to use tprint on this. We don't have to free that because it's tprint. Um, get selection entities. How do we do that? We're going to do this. Uh, hold over from the witness code base by on to June 2018. Okay, if Local to base entity and selected uh, entities uh, items. 
Okay, we're not going to F open yet. We're going to go builder. I'm going to go B as a string builder. And what are my string builders? Append with S. So we're going to go append B that. Append B that. Okay, vertex base face base uh, four if no mesh continue if e dot entity type is equal to anything we don't want to save. Uh, which is nothing right now. Okay. That's the same. If it's invisible, continue. The load source mesh we don't have an equivalent of right now. LODs we don't do. Removed mesh streaming a lot of stuff. Refer to the original code if we want to bring that back. So we're just going to get the mesh. It's much simpler. Entity name. T print entity. Oh. What is our, I think, I think we just say ID of E. I think that makes an ID string in this engine. He doesn't use the entity name here. He could have. Entity names are not unique, though. I hope I don't accidentally delete something we actually need. Anyway. And then how do we print to a builder? Do we just say uh, let's print to builder? Print to... Print, oh, is that in print? Print to builder. Yeah. Print to builder of B this entity name. That, we could combine that into one line, but whatever. For mesh dot vertices V uh, if base entity print to builder B we don't really format floats very well right now. Hmm. I'm going to make uh Actually no, you know what? percent dot nine f whatever. We just say it's fine. It's fine. I don't know why I was saying dot nine F. That's weird.
Do we even have vertex frames? I guess we do. Rotate normal is that if base entity not all of this is something that we may directly have analogies for for It's called list material mesh dot material info list dot material index. Who knows which of these variables is right? Name is get allocated material name. I don't know what the hell that is. Get allocated. We're going to have to look that up. Use middle. List first index. For I zero list dot num indices minus one. Okay. Seems kind of reasonable. Middle name is T print. Make sure I don't percent s anything accident. Oh yeah, I already screwed this up. Gotta catch the percent s's. Gotta catch the percent s's. I've made that mistake before. So we're writing materials files. Is that the entire, did I just delete the F close? Here, um, let's look back at the original one. Oh, it's in world panel. Okay, so I think we just kind of finished with this file, right? Do we like use F after this? No. So at this point, 
we are done making the main.obj file. Save it. Let's do this. Uh, write entire file. Do we have that in String Builder? No. Um, write entire file. All right. So we say S get results B write entire file um, file name uh, s so like that let's see if we at least get past that for compile errors I bet we don't semicolon expected at 114 now oh, we did get past that Okay, well, now we'll copy this stuff down to the end later. Save entire file. Write entire file. Middle name S. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so for material materials, this thing again. New middle. Okay. Get texture path. I have no idea what that's going to do. We'll work that out later. If path. Uh, print to builder M. That's weird. I have a feeling these paths end up wrong anyway, but whatever. Okay. Okay, let's replace the arrows with dots and get rid of these. Okay, and then Do this. Let's 
so this actually goes out here because we want that to happen no matter what. So file name is tprint. Uh, where's my middle? That's this. So we just do this. Write entire file. Yep. So something like that, and then we've got some things we haven't declared and all of these problems, and we've got control S's and control F's still hanging out. It's like, come on. All right. Well, 157 lines. That is a non-trivial amount of code. Call it E. World to object space. We do not have. Any questions about what I'm doing so far? Yeah, someone said there's still some stray percent out. Let's search for all of them. Percent F, none. Percent D, oh boy. Percent S, percent dot. Nine, yeah. Okay, so that's better. You thought it was a puzzle. No. Why are there no red parts of the last two error messages? Because probably the indentation thing that I did this morning broke that and I didn't notice. Uh, we will fix it. But this is a... Uh, game feature stream or game engine feature stream, so I don't want to go do compiler fixes right now. Maybe later tonight on a separate stream, we will do that. I have it on this. This is the compiler piece of paper. This is the game piece of paper. I have that on the compiler piece of paper. So never fear. And we're doing .obj export right now, so that gets a dash next to it on the game piece of paper. You've done some simple games on C Sharp and Java and a bit of C++. How would you put on lame terms what I'm doing? I am programming. Why again do the artists want an OBJ exporter? So that they can import scenes that they set up from the game into a modeling program uh, so that they know what size and shape to make the model and all that. Is it better for someone who's just starting to go without autocomplete? I think if you try, I don't use autocomplete almost ever because I can type things faster than I can stumble through autocomplete, right? If you're typing for real, you don't need to be looking at the keyboard or the screen in order to type and you just like crank it out. And there's a certain sureness to that, that like if you're navigating through an autocomplete doesn't really work. So I don't really use autocomplete at all. It's just not my thing. Can you make 2D and 3D games? Yes, it's a general purpose programming language. You can make 4D games. Do you ever find that converting sends you down bad paths? Well, it's the code is not going to come out in exactly the same style that it would otherwise, probably. Uh, and that's fine. Oh, you know, the other thing I want to do here in the error message for the compiler stream is I want to skip blank lines at the beginning. So we forgot to do that. Error message skip initial blank lines. Okay. You could make 10D games. 
it's true. You could. Uh, blank lines won't happen at the end, probably, because the end is the line where the error actually is, and you probably need something there to have an error. The last line, I mean, is where the error actually is. I don't know what I said. Okay. So... What are we doing now? We are staring at the screen, not quite knowing what to do. Oh yeah, I'm fixing the errors. We don't have world object space, which sounds ridiculous. We must have that somewhere. We must have frickin' object to world space. Like, that would be insane. Uh, maybe we called it something else. Object to world. Object to, oh, that's object to world matrix. Oh, I'm hating life. Okay, wait, let's try. Every panel. Object to world space. Okay, where is that? Object to world space. Main. We have world to object pose. Which does both a vector and a quaternion. I'm just going to make this one. Ugh, the fact that we don't have scale is bad juju. The fact that we don't have scale is bad juju. So we have scale Okay, so that's kind of my safe divide there times IS World object space Any questions? Undeclared identifier UV because I typed it in a bad syntax. I mean, either way. Get allocated material name. Why am I allocating that? Material, comma, materials, dot, I, the hell did that even do? I am a little worried about that. And I think I'm going to have to search the witness code. Because... 
I don't have my Visual Studio project set up for that anymore. Oh, come on, write another instance. Fucking programs. I want to save all this. I want to do a different search. Just leave this set up. This is when programs become useless. Like I can't. Just give me a second one, piece of shit. Ugh. Can I, can I request a, nope, nope. Can't run a second one, sorry. It's just, your computer is only a supercomputer from the year 2018. You can't pop open a second ultra search. Sorry, bro. You also can't search from Emacs because they require you to like install all of Sigwin in order to do recursive file search. Because that's the Unix philosophy. It probably, I could probably write a file search program pretty fast. It wouldn't have to be good. But I'd rather not. It is why we can't search nice things. You know what? I probably have it on my laptop. My old laptop, not the new one that I'm sending back. Except. I got a laptop. I'm gonna open the witness project file. It's gonna tell me my license is expired for that Visual Studio, and you can't do that either. Hi, where is it? Uh, VC. Okay. It's sure taking a long time to load the projects. Do not normalize my line endings. Okay. Get allocated material name. What is going on here? Oh, look, we found it. It only took a microscopic amount of time. Okay, this is a very simple procedure. I don't even know. It literally does basically nothing. And in fact, that which it does do is probably mostly out of date. So I'm just going to call it get material name and put it up here or scope file get material name rm is a render material returning string uh, name is material dot name if name is equal to default name equals nothing we don't want to call it default I guess uh, if name return name return T print unnamed whatever uh, with index because we passed an index. That's it. Super dumb. Items, not items. Dot count. Really? That's so weird. I don't think that's right. I think it's list.material index. Someone was on crack. Get material name. We'll just. 
I'll call it material. Fine. All right. Add unique. Okay, we don't want to copy this. Loss of information. And seventy three. We don't care, we don't care. Num vertices is not. What? So we have vertices, index array. How do I know how many faces it has? That's an interesting question. What is face base even used for? Face base. It is not used. Let me look at the old one. That is not used. Okay, great. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Mitch matching levels of indirection. Want a text input given pointer to string builder. It's not called get result, it's called builder builder to string. Get default ambient color. This is an exciting ambient color, believe you me. Get material name, undeclared identifier, underscore underscore I because that was from our macros maybe this other one was no okay wait materials no that's a pointer to render material Oh, wait. Doing something wrong here. Material info. It's an array of render material with no pointer. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. It's all good. Okay, 111. Get material name. Oh, whoops. All right. All right, bro. Okay. Undeclared identifier, get texture path. Okay. Get texture path. Okay. So we say uh, texture uh, name is string, short name. 
texture is a find in texture catalog a short name. full path if texture return I don't know f printf we don't do that Okay, well, let's save that because that is some progress. Added dot odd exporting code to uh, uh, the game can't invoke it yet. Okay. How are we doing in chat? You think line 68 should be minus three, not minus one. Line 68. List.num indices minus one. Um, probably, yeah. I guess that's We would hit an array bounds check as soon as we tried to do that. Um, C++ code would not, which is why we probably never caught that. Base plus I. Wait, what? This doesn't make sense to me at all. Index array. I guess these are pre-multiplied by three. Why does our index, what? What? This would require some commenting. Base plus I plus zero. Oh, yeah. I don't think we ever added a way to go by three. Okay, thanks for catching that. That would have been dumb. I mean, we would have seen an array bounds check, but uh, yeah. Oops. Fix a dumb mistake. Wait, did I not check in the other? Oh, I guess I did. I guess I did. What happens when you run into an array bound check? Does the whole program just implode? Yes. The whole program halts. Oh. 
Okay. So we've done all this. We need a way to invoke this. So I'm going to go into editor commands. We're going to make a new command called uh, command obj. Um, Right, and that's just going to invoke this other thing. I'm going to say we get selection. Do we log print from here? Well, we will. Okay. So if a uh, log print obj um, no entities were selected return okay otherwise uh, export obj file base name and uh, local to base entity. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so we'll type this command obj and uh, base name is name if no name base name equals Export. That's it. All right. Let's see what that does. We load the editor. We say obj. Oh, wow. We're not. See, Windows doesn't deal very well with the thing being on the left, frankly. OBJ. No entities were selected. Let's select some entities. Boom, 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 boom. OBJ. Well, it did something. We should say that we did something. Run tree exports. Hey, look, we got files. Look at that. Look at that. That all looks like something. I don't know if it's right, but whatever. Okay. Um, well, I just love how easy it is to do this stuff in this language, man. That's it really makes it all worthwhile. Okay. Um, we export the object file. And well, then we say log print obj exported uh, whatever dot obj however many entities. Um, Now let's uh, put a key binding, right? Um, what is it called? Oh, editor, editor dot key map. How about control O? Control O is colon obj um, export. Let's do that. All right, so we go this. 
Actually, if the console is not open, we should we should print something. So like here, I can't see the console. I'm going to control O. There's nothing selected. No entities were selected. So let's flash something for that. OK, control O. Export, export dot obj. Um, let's add a counter to it. So you can keep slamming control O. Add counter equals true. Oh, do we support named arguments? I don't think we do. No, we don't. Can't do that from here. Uh, OK. First argument is file name. Second argument is whether it's relative to the first entity. Default is global coordinates. Third argument is whether we should add a unique suffix uh, so that you can just keep hitting uh, and slamming out new files. Uh, false, true. OK. Um, add suffix false. If add suffix, scope file, Emacs is getting annoying because I opened this. OK. Uh, obs counter is 0. Uh, base name equals tprint percent 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 uh, base name ob counter and something else that we'll add or we'll put ob counter third and um, ob counter one I kind of want to put the time the startup time or something like that I'll call it a uh, date stamp, something human readable. Do we have a way of getting the date stamp? I think so. Month. Yes. Get system time local. Does anyone call that and print out a reasonable string? Get system time. No. OK. Local time as string to uh, string bool. Local is get system time local. If no success, return uh, couldn't get time false. OK, otherwise,
Well, year, month, day. We're going to do year, month, day, time of startup. Okay. You know what? We're not going to put this in basic because this is very particular. Um, I'm going to put it here. Return T print day, no month, day, comma, year. Some random number. Um, okay local dot year month name local dot day uh, startup time like that okay month name is month strings sub uh, month index Just to make sure month index is local dot month. I don't know if that's one to twelve or get system time. Let's look at that. System time. I feel like it starts at one for some stupid reason. Yes. Okay, is that the same as... Gah! Visual Studio just jumped on my butt. Bro, I thought this was licensed. I'm in the middle of doing this stuff. I don't remember my Microsoft account. Maybe I do. Your evaluation period has ended. All right, well, till I figure that out, we can't work on the compiler anymore. Great. I thought that was a paid license copy, but I guess I never did it. All right. Uh, we don't need that for now, as long as there's no deadly compiler bugs. <laughs> uh, community edition doesn't optimize code particularly well, from what I understand. Oh, slideshow is broken. Slideshow already had an error. What? Okay, we'll, we'll do that in a bit. We can't derail from this though. I'm a little worried. Uh, Okay, system time, month is 1 to 12. All right. All right, so we took care of that. That's great. Uh, month strings.
Okay. Year, month name. That's not the right order. I want the day. Day, local dot day, month name, year, and then startup time. And then on back of that, we put our object counter. You know what, why bother with underscores because, yeah, great. So, startup time, do we already have that? Usually I have something called like seconds in startup or something. Second since startup. Startup time. Oh, but we don't have the startup time. Okay. If startup time is less than zero, now is get time, startup time. It's not strictly startup time, but whatever. Not strictly startup time, just, just the first time after startup that we needed a stamp. So the point of this is just if you do multiple sessions in the same day, you'll get a different thing. As long as you didn't run the program twice in the same second and try to export an opt file, which won't happen. Okay, startup time equals, uh, cast int now. Okay, something like that. Sure took a long time to do that. Return statement is missing argument two. You know, return statement, um, that should have better lexical highlighting for sure. I guess we just put it there, even though the missing argument's over there. There's no way really to know. Maybe for missing argument, you put it after a dude, I don't know. We'll try that. Um, return statement, missing argument, a lexical. I'm gonna have to dig up my Visual Studio license so we can do a compiler fixes stream. All right, uh, 476. Return this comma true, bro. Bro, date stamp. Date stamp. Oh. Date stamp success local time as string. Ignore our success, we will just get a junky string if it failed. A junky but valid string if it failed. Actually, let's not do that. If no success, date stamp equals nothing. It's fine. Okay, so I'm going to load these, start spamming these out. All right, let's go to our export folder. Look at all those exports. 2 July 2018. Oh, 
Okay, when I say now, it's returning me six because it was six seconds since startup. Uh, and instead of that underscore, it's kind of cryptic. Um, Just going to put something in parentheses. And then uh, here we'll just put number whatever. OK, I want to delete all these. And Feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, not get time. We need get time. How do I get time? Where does that get time get its time? That's query performance counter. No, we're not using that one. Get current file time. I don't, why don't we, what is all this crap? Who gives a shit about any of this? It's nobody, obviously nobody uses this for anything. Um, and this is query performance counter. All right, well, we will use uh, we're getting the local time right here. Um, let's use, what was that one? Local, oh, system time. Um, hour times minute. Why is hour zero to 36? It's kind of weird. Equals. Um, local dot hour times uh, 3600 plus local dot minute times 60 plus local dot second. So it's down to the second. It's fine. Okay. Bam, ba bam, bam, ba bam, bam, bam. Export to July 2018, 64619, number 0, 123467. I quit it. I run again. I load. I go bam, 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 bam. Yep, different file name. Uh, this is great. And this is a much better implementation than I would have had in the witness. It's just programming in a better language just makes me do more stuff, even though in principle it's not that much easier. It's just, it matters. Probably don't even need the mod 12. Clamp is wrong. You probably want month name. Oh, July. Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, wait, this is... Uh, 1 to 12, month index minus equals 1. It's not July. It ain't July right now. It ain't July. 
2 June 2018. I don't think you heard correctly. What do you need to export the objects? I already explained that multiple times. Sorry, go check back on the video. Now we check it in. Add editor, export capabilities. And then I will send an email to the team I have just added the ability to export .obj files. It works a bit differently than it did in the witness engine. The TLDR is that if you oh oh um i want to make sure uh that we flash that error flash error if no export actually i'll do it no matter what okay the tldr is that if you press control o it will export obvious files into run tree exports and you need file names each time. If you want to set up a custom key map to control this better, you can copy this from oh, editor local, right. I don't want to mislead people. Editor local. Yep. And uh, modify to taste. Okay, before I send this email, it's in buffer ASDF, ASDF. Before I do this, I want to fix that. Uh, report, editor report. Okay. So, um, log print, editor report. No entities were selected or message. Let's try that. Eleven. No entities were selected. Boom. We'll just say, you know what? We'll just say exported. Because that big message wasn't doing anyone any good. No entities were selected. Exported. All right. Great. Let's put this back. Better feedback on export. Ba Bam. Um, do report. Yeah, okay, so I'm going back to ASDF, ASDF. 
Uh, let me know if there are any problems. Send mail or reply all to everyone here. Edit subject. I want to say you can also run the ob command directly from the console. Let's see what happens if we just run that, because we haven't done that that way in a while. OBJ, no entities were selected. OBJ, exported, export.obj, three entities. Great. Woo, I, I really enjoy making games in this language. I tell you people, it's, it's preferable, bruh. Okay, the last game feature that I have on my list is a large feature that is an entire stream, possibly multiple streams on its own. So I think this is the place to end this stream. How long have we been going? Like two and a half hours? Three hours, great. Um, we got some stuff done. Any official questions on topic today? Or off topic, screw it. Let me let me also make some tea and I could I could do some off topic questions. Oh, how did you register the command obj function procedure so you could call obj in the game terminal? The way that works is in editor commands, actually anywhere in the program, if we tag anything with this thing register command, then the meta program knows that that means make a command out of it, right? So any procedure anywhere in the program uh, can have that. So if I go here, this is our meta program. It's a substantially long program. It's 915 and what was it called? Register command. So you may have seen these compiler message loops that we do. Uh, when messages come in that code has been type checked, we check declarations. If it's uh, got this tag, register command. We add it to a list of commands to register. And then when we're done processing code and want to output uh, registration, we, we do that. And then what that looks like is we generate a procedure. Um, we basically generate a procedure that has a bunch of lines in it that say add command, blah, 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 right? With the string name that you call it by, and uh, you know the name in the code that it is, and then the number of arguments and all that. And then we also generate a front procedure that does type checking on the arguments. So if I try to call obj, so the first name is a string, but uh, the second was like a Boolean or something. Let's look at what the arguments are, <laughs> right? Uh, obj, so that's a string, but the second one is a Boolean, third one is a Boolean, so if I go, uh, obj export a number, it'll say, uh, oh, well, <laughs> um, we're accidentally printing out new line to the console, which is what that is, oops. But unable to parse argument one is a Boolean, right? So, uh, and I don't know why we're still running the command anyway, but we are, which is maybe bad. But so we're doing all this type checking automatically. Um, let me write down on the game engine features, uh, filter out 10, 13, et cetera, before console print. Test, <laughs> test with obj, uh, invalid argument. 
Anyway, it's a really cool meta program because it allows me to add new things with no markup, right? Like I can change the parameters and the types and everything and they'll just automatically get tracked every time we compile. And we're doing that every time we compile. So when we compile this in one second, 1.08 seconds, right? We're doing all that every time. It's none of this weak ass C++ crap where you take 30 seconds and don't do any of that. Okay, let me heat up some tea and we'll do some more questions. Hold on. Waiting for the tea to heat up. You want to make games in this language too? What sorts of bribes? Um, I think if you paid me $50 million, not Zimbabwe dollars, US dollars, um, we would put you on the list to get it next month. Do I clean my own place or do I hire someone else to do it? Usually I hire someone else. Uh, here, I haven't even done that yet because I'm lazy. So my place is starting to get a little dirty, but I only moved in a little while ago. So, Do I open the objects in an editor or game editor? You open them in an external editor like Maya or 3D Studio Max. That's the whole point of the export. Uh, we don't use .obj files to load our own meshes. We have our own format. OBJ is not a very good format. It's just, it's easy to output and et cetera. Would I recommend starting out learning a lower level programming language like C? Sure, why not? Learning is good. How do you deal with the memory for temporary strings like the file name you just did? Do you just let it leak? No, there is a thing called temporary storage that is automatically cleared every frame. It's a convention so libraries can use it if they want to. Uh, there's a whole YouTube video about that and a couple other subjects. Just search temporary storage on my YouTube channel. Ah, oh, my tea is ready. Let me get that and then we'll do some more. Pay you in Venezuelan dollars, I don't take those either. They don't use dollars, they use Bolivars or Chavismos or something in Venezuela. I do not accept Venezuelan Chavismos.
So you meant, did I test the files in an editor? No, I don't have an editor installed that would test these. So somebody on the art team will do it and it'll be wrong and they'll tell me that it's wrong. How many people work on the design portion of this game? Uh, well, so far I'm the only person who has done level design, uh, except, well, I mean, we start with the work of other designers. Uh, I don't want to give away too much about that, but um, of the new stuff done for this game, it's been all me so far, but starting next month, we have an intern who's going to show up and work with me to crank out a bunch of levels. We did move our office, yes. Um, do I think annotations having arguments is a can of worms? No, I don't think it's a can of worms. And in fact, it's probably the right way to do things. Uh, if only because when it's just strings like it is right now, what if I one library that I'm using picks a string and another library picks the same string and they get confused about each other's annotations, right? That's no good. So. Uh, if it's a struct that has to be declared, then those can be two structs in different namespaces and there's no ambiguity. So long term, that's the plan. It's just we haven't gotten around to it. A while ago, we were fixing angle snapping and had to write a quick and dirty F mod. What was the bug there? It was something about our me just having the type wrong or something. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was something dumb. We do still use the C math routines. I would like to get away from that simply because those rely on libc. Like at the very minimum, I would like to get someone's, you know, standard trig functions or something like that and link against those. I bet there is such a thing. And that would drastically reduce our dependency on libc. What kind of optimizations do we do? Well, if we do an optimizing build, we hand the code off to LLVM and LLVM does like everything for our backend for the debug build. Um, we don't do any optimizations. The file exporting is just happening in the middle of the frame. These are small files. So we dump one out, you barely notice, right? They're not, they're not asynchronous or anything. Have we considered a Kickstarter? I've considered it. Um, I actually did an application for, uh, for, whoops, echo, for affiliate status on Twitch so I could get a dono situation going. Um, uh, dashboard. It's probably they're going to reject it again for stupid reasons. Affiliate onboarding. My tax interviews are under review. So who the hell knows? They probably won't like that my address is different from my address when I filed taxes last year. Venezuelan dollars are worth less than World of Warcraft money. Yeah, I saw that.
working to get into the game industry and have some C++ experience already, but you like this language way too much, what should you use? Mostly for professional projects, if you know, oh, mostly for personal projects, if you know the big studios still use C++. You know, I don't know. Like, I think if you want to get a job in the game industry, you definitely need to be good at C++, uh, except you'd be surprised. I, I mean, so, you know, there's some shops that, for example, use C Sharp for their tools, or there's some people that because they use Unity, use C Sharp for their whole damn game now, even though that's a bad idea. Uh, so, you know, C++ and C Sharp, if you have some experience in both of those, that's pretty good. Uh, different studios may care about one or the other of those. Uh, everyone will probably care about C++, even though it's a terrible language. Is Silkabon going to be a commercial game? Yes, it is. We will be selling it on Steam and at least one game console. And that's how you prove that your language is serious, as you ship a console game with it. Bruh. How do you use LLVM, their C API or C++ one? Um, we are using the C++ API. I thought they deprecated the C API, or maybe they just made it annoying. I don't know. Uh, no, we don't dump IR into a file. That's a... That is a perilous way to do it. When I first did my initial barely existing attempts at interfacing with LLVM, I decided that would be the thing to do. And it was horrible because none of the tools sanity check the input. So your output can just be just totally wrong and they'll accept it and it'll invisibly do something wrong. You have a whole community of people here who clearly have free time if you want level design slave labor. Yes, and then I will have a game with the same level of design acumen as open source software has with coding quality. It's just not a good way to design games. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. When you just, you know, designed by everybody is not a good way to design. Any idea of the timeline for the next release? Uh, we're hoping for a small private release by the end of the summer, and then maybe we'll widen it after that. I don't know. How do you go about choosing interns? This will be the first time we've ever done an intern situation, so I don't know. You know, normally when people, there, there would be a few people who sent us emails and we read them and we were just like, ugh, don't want to do that. Uh, someone did though, and uh, this person seemed really on the ball, so we said, okay. And then I got a bunch, of, don't do what this one guy did, where he sent me like fucking, no exaggeration, 50 emails because I don't reply to them because we already had an intern and he just keeps emailing me. It's not going to make me like you more. Like after email number three, just chill. <laughs> the thing that you learn when you're really busy, so I get so much email, right, that I just can't reply to it all and, uh, and not, get it, not and get anything done, right? And so the thing that you learn when you're busy is just, look, the fact that somebody sends you something does not obligate you to reply to them. Right. Because if you let other people make work for you, then they will drag you down very quickly. So uh, when you're sending emails out, remember that like, OK, it's nice if somebody replies. But look, if they're busy, then they won't. You know, I don't have a secretarial staff to do these things. So uh, just be cool with it and, and know that that's how it goes. Do we do code reviews or do you have opinions about them? Yes, uh, no, we don't do code reviews generally, except in special situations. Like if there's a junior person who we're teaching how to work on the stuff. But for regular programmers, we don't code review unless someone requests it. Like you might say, hey, I did this complicated thing in a system that I'm not very familiar with, I'm requesting review, right? Uh, but that's very rare, it's very rare. 
If you hire people where you need to code review most of them most of the time, that's not a very good way to work. You probably hired the wrong people in that case. Why do you think you make what could be considered puzzle games? I answer that question a lot. I don't want to answer it right now. What does final Qs 39577 mean? Those are how many entries went in the scheduler for top level-ish declarations. And I'm outputting that because there's some relationship between that and the speed of the compiler. One of the compiler tasks that I have on the list is to retry an optimization that I apparently didn't quite do well enough last week that would reduce that number by 10 or 20 percent. Um, so maybe we'll do that sometime soon. But this undeclared identifier fix is more important. What stands out to me on a resume? Uh, nothing. Resumes are not that interesting. What's interesting to me is what you can do. So if you've done projects, that stands out. Uh, there's not really a class you can take that would stand out because nobody, college classes don't teach you very much that's of use, honestly. Um, so for this intern situation, uh, it was more about just having a phone call, having a conversation, figuring out that this person knew what was up and that was good enough for me. So, uh, but applying for a regular job, mm, it's rough <laughs> because most people's resumes just really don't have information that can differentiate them from anyone. What is the next big feature that will take multiple streams? I would have explained that if I felt like it. Uh, how much interest about the language do you get from industry people? A lot. There are a lot of people bugging me to play with this. Um, often it's people who want it in their spare time or for side projects because large game companies are not about to drop their 5 million line of code engine and switch to a random language. But uh, there's a lot of people who are interested in it, who are people who know what they're doing. I did not take part in the Cyan Kickstarter just because I'm not a big like own physical copies of games kind of a guy. It's not my thing. And with that, we have made it through the questions. I'm going to take a break. Thank you, everybody, for coming by. Uh, we may do another stream tonight. We'll see how it feels. I may go back and fix up some compiler issues, like those undeclared identifiers not appearing correctly. What is going on there? and the blank lines. See you all later. Oh, let's host